1200 Cook Street in the fair city of Gretna. The Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My brothers and sisters, if you can hear my voice, that means you are yet on top of the dirt, and the dirt is not on top of you. Oh my God, we are grateful and thankful for the Lord. The Bible says, they that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. As we come this morning, we ask that you will allow your hearts and your minds to dwell on him who has carried us from last week to this week. Let this song minister to your heart and mind as we prepare ourselves to go into our devotional period.
praise the Lord. The blessings of the Lord is here. Once again, we are grateful and thankful for your presence this morning. That means you're yet in the land of the living. And for that, if nothing else, we are grateful to the Lord. Well, our devotional period have arrived. And if you have your Bibles, and you should, I'm going to ask that you would turn with me to the 122nd Psalm. The 122nd Psalm, and we will con consider all nine verses for our devotional reading this morning. I will lead us in prayer, following the reading of our scripture, and then we will have our devotional song of praise. Once again, the 122nd Psalm. Psalms 122. Beginning at verse number one and concluding at verse number nine. Afterward, we will be led in prayer and then our hymn of praise. From the 122nd Psalm, you will find these words recorded. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. The 122nd Psalm. May the Lord bless the reader. May he bless the hearer. But most of all, may he bless the doer of his word. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, once again... We find ourselves in a familiar posture, bowed in humility, with our eyes closed and our knees bowed in many cases. As we stand or kneel before you in praise and adoration for your goodness and your kindness. We do realize, Lord, that without you, we can do nothing. One lyricist had put it this way, we would be like ships without sails. And Father, we thank you for the power and the presence of your spirit that reside in each scriptural baptized believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And his primary objective is to lead us, to guide us, and to direct us into all truth. But most of all, to convict us regarding sin and righteousness. And Father, you carried us from last Sunday to this Sunday. Father, some folk that were with us last week are not here with us this week. And so, Father, when we look back over our lives, we say, thank you, sir. Recognizing that it was you who protected us from the dangers, seen and unseen. It was you who stayed the hand of our chief adversary, the devil, and made him behave. It was you who laid us down last night. It was you who decided to wake us up this morning closing our right minds, a reasonable portion of our health and our strength, the activity of our limbs, blessed with the basic and essential things that we need to survive in this life. You have a roof over our head. You put food on our tables and clothes on our backs. And we pause to say, thank you, sir. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for Jesus, the Christ, your son, the son of the living God. He's not dead, but he's alive and well on planet Earth. As he dwells inside of each one of us, the ecclesia, the called out ones, because we are, the Bible says, the lights of the world, and we are the salt of the Earth. And Father God, we thank you, Lord, now for this day, the Lord's day, his Sabbath. Father, ask that you would meet us in this place at 1200 Cook Street and that you would meet and bless every door that is open universally in your name proclaiming your truth speak for through and in spite of your people 
Stand with the man of God as he proclaims the word of God according to your will and your way. And Father, specifically remember 1200 Cook Street. May Ichabod never be written over the doorposts of this local assembly. We want to proclaim Jesus. We want to win men to Christ. We want to build them in their faith. We want to send them out to win others to our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the Christ. That the kingdom of the living God will be manifested and spread in this world. So, Father God, remember the man of God, one Elder Samuel Miller Sr. Strengthen him on every leading side. Illuminate, manifest, and give revelation right now in the name of Jesus. Bless the hearers, our visitors, and our friends who have tuned in with us perhaps for the very first time. Speak to their hearts in a plain, simple, and clear way that they may understand the word of God. Grasp it, desire it with their whole heart, and do what the Roman jailer did 2,000 plus years ago. Come running fast, quick, in, in the hurry, asking the same question that had been asked throughout the annals of time. What must I do to be saved? And we would declare with one voice, believe on the Lord Jesus, the Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Remember the sick and afflicted in this place and globally all over, Lord. Remember those who have lost loved ones. Would you comfort them and encourage their hearts? Remember the believers, Lord. Let them know that you will never leave them, nor will you ever forsake them right now in the name of Jesus. Those who have lost loved ones that don't know you, Lord, use it as an opportunity to speak into their hearts and to draw them nearer to you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless this worship service now, Lord. Heal, deliver, and set free according to your will and for your glory. Bless the worship all over now, Lord. Speak and have your way. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask it, we believe it, and we decree Give it to be so. Let this song minister to your hearts and your minds as we prepare to come before you with the word of God. Give me your
giving honor to the Almighty God, to Pastor Stevenson, and to those of you who are present here this morning, yes. and to those of you who have tuned in to this telecast, both visitors and friends, yes. we come to say it, thank you for another day of God sending opportunity. Yes. Yes. We pray that he, the Holy Spirit, we come into our midst this morning. Yes, yes. We pray that we will stand with me right here yes. in our attempt to deliver God's message to God's people. Yes. We know that he is our redeemer. We know that all power is in his hands. And he is able to supply our every needs. Now, I say that this morning because I don't know about you, but I know that I need the Lord. Yes, yes. I need him to walk with me, to talk to me, yes. just place me in his bosom to tell me that I am his own. Yes. For God surely has been good to us. Yes. This morning, if you just be kind enough this morning and to open your Bibles to the book of Psalm. That is the 40th Psalm, Psalm 40. And for Brother Riggs, we'll read verses 1 through 4. I'll repeat, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 4. Now, it's my desire to do the whole entire Psalm of 40, but then I must be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So I'll go as far as God would direct me. For the reading this morning, beginning at verse 1 of that 40th Psalm, the reading is as thus I waited patiently for the Lord. Yes. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the moral clay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and set my feet upon a rock yes. and established my step. He had put a new song in my mouth. Mm -hmm song of praise, praise to God, our Lord, our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who maketh the Lord his trust mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lie. May the Lord bless the reading of his divine word. Father, I come this morning yes, yes, yes. as humble as I know how. I come, Father, to ask of thee of thy blessings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of thy mercy, thy goodness, and I come to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done for me. And not only for me, Father, but for all of those who put their trust in thee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We thank you, Father. And Father God, we want to praise your holy and your righteous name. Mm -hmm. We know that you are our Redeemer. We know all power is in your hands. We come, Father, depending upon you and trusting in you for your word. So, Father God, we pray, Father, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart mm -hmm. would be acceptable in thy sight, I pray. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, this I ask of you in your son Jesus' name, for God it is in Jesus' name that I pray. And we all may say, Amen. 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 
Now, it is not my intention this morning to be long. I have had a hard, hard week this, month, this week. Oh, my Lord. The body is tired. Yes, yes, yes. But my spirit tells me to go on. Yes, sir. Because I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Oh yes, I had the idea of calling the pastor and telling him that I have changed my mind. I'm not going to be able to make this trip this morning. Uh -huh, uh -huh. God remind me of my promise. All right. He's a All good right. God. All right. Uh -huh. All right. And if I'm not expecting God to do for me, what he promised to do for me, so I'll talk about it. then it is my duty to try to do what I told him I'm going to do to him. All right, all right. I know that he is perfect. All right. And I'm mortal. And in my stumbling, my ups and my downs, my pains and my worries, yes, sir. Talk he about promised it. to pick me up, yeah. to lift me up. Oh, my goodness. So I'm here this morning. Thank God. May the blessing of the Lord be upon me. Yes, yes, yes. Now as we look at this 40th Psalm, we can see that this is a Psalm of Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, yes. And we know that uh, this Psalm is preached or used mostly uh, during our national nation National Day of Thanksgiving. All right, all right. And we just got through celebrating what we call Thanksgiving. And thank God for that. But I find that it is a blessing to live in a country that has at least set one day aside a year to give thanks to the Almighty God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now, we Christians, we Christians, we know that every day is a day of thanksgiving. Yes. Oh, yes. yeah. We, we don't wait till uh, November to start giving thanks Thank to you. the Almighty God. We know that every day is a day of thanksgiving. Uh, I told you some time ago that the word psalm is a Hebrew word. And I noticed that uh, for the last couple of Sundays, I've been, I, times I preach that is, I, I've been coming from the book of Psalms. Uh -huh. And what I do notice, again, the pastor has been coming from the book of Psalms. <laughs> now, now, something got to have a coalition there. Go ahead, Albert. Huh? And, and it tells me that we are not directed by our own mm -hmm. knowledge. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't know what he was going to preach about. And he didn't know what I was going to preach about. Matter of fact, we didn't know what we were going to preach about. But we find ourselves in the book of, of Psalms. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Now, as I said, I told you some time ago that the word psalm is a Hebrew word that means praise. Come on, come on. Or the psalm of praise. And I also say that I don't know of any biblical foundation for worshiping the Almighty God than the Hebrew book of psalms. Mm -hmm. I, I, I use the word that I. I didn't say you. Right. I don't find. Yeah. Uh, no stronger or better foundation to worship the Almighty God than the Book of Psalms. So as we look at this 40th Psalm, we can see that it is a Psalm of Thanksgiving. And David is the writer. David is writing this song. 
He wrote this psalm particularly for uh, what we call the chief musician, or what is called the director of music. That's in our English there. Well, in this psalm, David doesn't tell us who this director is. Uh, the chief musician is. Well, it could have been Dutan. Mm -hmm. Dutan, he had been appointed over the music department. Or it could have been Mescal, uh, one of Coral's son. Or uh, it could have been Asphax, for he was a director, a priest, or who was a head of the service of music. But the one thing that we do know uh -huh, uh -huh. is that this music director seemed to be going through some tough times. My goodness. Not only that, but but it appears that this director was also a servant of the Most High God. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that most of us think that when we serve God, our problem is over. We can see that this director, being a, high, a servant of the Most High God, was going through some tough times. Yeah, he told us that we're going to have trials and tribulations. Yes, sir. So David began to write this psalm of praise. Now, if you would look at this 40th psalm, you will see that David was indirectly, indirectly telling this director of music that to wait upon the Lord. Not only that he tells him to wait on the Lord, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he tells him how to wait. Mm -hmm. For he, he, said, he said to wait patiently. Now, when I saw this, it reminded me of nowadays. It reminded me of, of how people don't want to wait for nothing. They don't want to wait. So David tells this musician that he waited. He had to wait patiently for the Lord. Not only that, but he tells them that he inclined unto him. In other words, David is saying that, he says that the Lord I got God's attention. Mm -hmm. He says that when I got his attention, he turned to me. Come on now, come on. He doesn't stop there. He went on to say, he heard my cry. You see, David says that the Lord brought him up out of a horrible pit, out of the moral clay. And he went on to say that, but he set my feet upon a rock. Not only that, but he said that he established my garment. Mm -hmm. And in verse 3, he said, I love this. He put a new song mm -hmm. in my mouth. Well, in this first psalm, David is telling us how to receive the blessings that God has in store for us. David said that he waited. Now, this tells us that God did not respond immediately mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to David's request. All right. No. Now, if he would have had said it, David wouldn't have to tell us that he had to wait. Mm -hmm. Now, you know the story of David. <laughs> David waited from the time he was anointed to be king. He had to wait a long time. Some 17, I don't remember the amount of years, but he had to wait. But not only did he tell them that he had to wait on the Lord, but he tells him that he waited, and he said that I waited patiently. You see, 
The reason I find that so many of us has problems receiving from God is because we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. Some of us don't mind waiting, but our problem is patience. We, we, we don't have patience to wait. We mumble, we grumble. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, even Sarah, Abraham's wife, huh? Start mummering, grumbling. And it seems as though we are people that just don't have patience. Everything is microwave. Right now. I, I need it right now. Come now, Lord, right now. You see, God knows your need. But he told you to ask. He said, ask and it will be given unto you. You see, if you're actually going to give it to you, sometimes you might be asking God for something that's not right for you. Right, right, huh? right. But we got to think that we say that God says no. He's probably not saying no, but it's probably not good for you at that that's particular right. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, he, he says that he, and we cannot wait to see what God is going to do for us. We even go to supermarkets and we see people putting their children in the line whilst they're still shopping. Oh my goodness. Yeah. People just can't wait. <clears throat> and, 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 and there are people that run at red lights more than ever before. We got to get there. We can't wait. Even when we go to church, we see people uh, sometimes mummering and grumbling and, and they're talking about the church growth. But they can't wait. But we got to learn to wait on the Lord because you can't do nothing about Christian growth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18 that he's going to build a church. Mm -hmm. Not only did he say he's going to build it, but he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Oh, we're going to have trials and tribulation, but I know the gates of hell is not to come down. Yes, yes. It, can't prevail. it cannot prevail it. You see, this is a, a beautiful song. Because it encourages us to do what? To wait. It tells us, not only that it tells us, that encourages us to wait, but it tells us how to wait. You see, David said that he received full benefits from waiting on the Lord. Full. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said that God lifted him out of his despair. Right, right, right. And then he tells us that God set his feet upon a rock. And third, he said that he gave him a firm place to stand on. And what I like about the fourth thing he said is that God put a new song in my mouth. You see, blessing cannot come to us unless we are willing to go through the trials of waiting. Wait. wait. And waiting seems to be one of our, our major problems. Now, I say that it's one of our major problems. I say that because we have many Many major problems nowadays. You see, when one say or use the word major, most cases he is referring to one particular thing or the most severe or important event. 
But not in this case. People today, we have many mm -hmm. major problems. But one of them is waiting because some of us don't want to wait for nothing. The Bible tells us this in Isaiah 40, yes, huh? yes, yes. 31, yes. they that wait yes. upon the Lord shall renew yes. their strength. Yes, yes, yes. Well, in verse 2, David tells us that God brought him up out of a horrible pit, up, up, out of moral clay. Now, if you just think about it, if you just think back a little bit and see where God has brought you from, I think we didn't forgot about Katrina. But this last storm should remind us the storms of life is not over. Yes, yes. You see, you remember how devastating this was during the time of Katrina. And it could have been that way last month. And God has brought us out. Not only that he has brought us out, but he has put our feet upon a solid rock. Oh, now you might be saying, my feet not too solid. But I tell you what, if God turns his back upon you, you find out how solid rock he has put you on. <laughs> yes, sir. Some of us don't know, didn't know where the next month rent was coming from. Tell it, tell it, tell it. But we have given us a place to stand on. And he has established our going. Some of us have jobs today that we couldn't even foresee. And not only that, but you see, I love that third voice where David said that he had put a new song in my mouth. Yes, yes. A song of praise. Song of praise. You see, we need to praise God a little bit more. I, I was talking to my wife a few weeks ago and she brought up a sermon that I preached. And I said about, we got to have all these rooms. We don't thank God for where the leak is not at. The one little leak. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. And, and, and we're going to complain about it. Come on, preacher. One leak, you complain about it. No leak nowhere else. And okay. still, we thank God for the goodness. We pick out the worst thing, and we complain oh. about it. My goodness. Just ask God to fix it for you. He's able. he got the power. But you got to do what you, God has required of you. You see, in this song, David said, says, he's talking to this director, blessed is the man that put his trust in the Lord. That's where we get in trouble, that we trust in man, not in God. And we praise God for the wonder that he has done and the things that he has planned for us. Yes, yes. You see the thing that God has done for us? They're too numerous for us to count. Yeah, they're too numerous. You can't count what God has done for you. He woke you up this morning, started you on your way, gave you health and strength. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He provided a job for you. You can't count what God has done yes, for you. Yes, you don't even yes. know what's going on up in the heavens and the elements of the earth. Yes, yes. God spoke to it and said, and spoke to the uh, to the word and they just said, and flipped his fingers and the stars appeared. Oh. Give you light. Give you. I've heard a scientist say that if the sun would remove just one degree My goodness. to the earth, we would burn up. And if we move one degree back, we will freeze to death. Yes, we yes. cannot count what God has done for us. You see, David, in David days, the religious rituals, they involved sacrifices of animals. For well, David says that these acts are meaningless unless they are done for the right reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Today, 
We often make riches even going to church. Even in taking the Lord's Supper or praying, paying tithes as some of us do. All of this is good. But these activities are meaningless and they are empty if they are selfish, if they are done for the wrong reason. Yes, yes, yes. You see, some of us don't know why we come to church. Some just want to be with the crowd. Because you know, Pastor, there's a thing going on now. You, you're all right if you go to church. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we see, we, we see he was the president pick up a, the Bible and show it to us and let the world know he's going to church. Oh, my goodness. I, I heard somebody say, the devil goes to church. Yep. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, when we look at 1 Samuel 15 and 22, which says that obedience is better than sacrifice. God wants you to be obedient to his word. You see, we must make sure that uh, we are giving God the obedience and the praise that he desires of us. Well, in John 4 and 34 and uh, 5 and 30, Jesus portrayed this attitude of obeying and serving God. Now, uh, if Jesus gave us his obedience. What about us? He said that my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. You see, he came just as the prophet had foretold, proclaiming preaching the good news of God's righteousness and forgiveness of sin. You see, David said that I speak of the God's faithfulness. Now he was talking to this director of music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, I speak of God's faithfulness and his salvation to those that are around him. You see, when we feel the impact of God's righteousness upon our life, you can tell it because you can't keep this to yourself. Mm -hmm. No, you can't keep it to yourself. You can't keep it here. You've got to tell somebody else. He went on to tell us that you've got to Run and tell somebody. I heard grandma say it. You just can't keep it to yourself. You got to run and tell somebody else. You see, that's what we call evangelists. David said, I will speak of your faithfulness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and salvation. And I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the congregation. You see, people who are faithful to us, they accept, they accept and they love us. You can tell, uh, even when we are unlovable. Yeah, faithful people, they keep their promises. Yes, yes. Yeah, God's faithfulness is like human Faithfulness. The only difference is that his faithfulness is perfect. God's love is not only perfect, but it's absolute. And his promises is irrevocable. If he promises you something, you can depend upon it. Not like, man, I, I might tell you something and might have to go back on my word. All right. But if God tells you, you can bet your life on it. You see, he loves us in spite of our constant bend towards sin. Yes, 
Come on, come on, preacher. And he keep all of his promises that he had made to us. Even when we break our promises to him. That's why I want to praise him this morning. I want to praise God. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to praise God because when praise goes up, Bible tells me that blessings come down. David tells this musician, uh, this music director, how good God has been to him. He tells him that he waited on the Lord, and he said that the Lord inclined to me, and he heard my prayer. Yes. He said, and I just had to wait patiently. And that means that David did not mumble nor grumble, that he just kept on praising God. Yes, yes. And then yes. he said that the Lord heard my cry. And he lifted me out of a slimy pit, out of the muck and the mud. Yes. Well, yes. have you ever been stuck in the muck and the mud? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I know that I have been in the stuck in the muck, in the mud. Uh -huh. You see, I've been stuck, you see, not only one time, but I, on, I got stuck on. several times. And I don't know but you, but I've been stuck, you see. And sometime I thought I was going ahead, and I found myself going backwards. Come on, come sometime on. I thought I was making, I made one step forward, oh, and then I made two steps backwards. You see, but I found out that God was good to me. And when I turned my life over to the Almighty God, and then he gave me a foreign place to stand on. All right, and that's all right. why I want to praise him this morning. I want to praise him because he woke me up this morning. Tell it, tell I praise him because he started me on my way. I, I want to praise him because of God knows my heart and uh, I just want to praise God this morning now. Uh, you see, uh, he did all of these things for me and I'm happy because he had put what? A new song oh, in my mouth. mouth. You see, yes, yes. I remember when I used to sing nearer my God to thee, but now I'm singing now uh, uh, and look at the mirror to see how close he is to me, you see. Mm -hmm. I want to praise God this morning. Uh, I can praise him in the noonday hour. And I, I praise him in the still hours of the night. And I, I praise him early in the morning. You see, new millennium, you ought to praise God this morning. Because, you see, when praises go up, blessings come down. And I read in Psalm 150, which said that everything that has breath, Yes. Praise the Lord. You see, you ought to praise him this morning. I know you're at home this morning, but that could be your sanctuary. Praise him in the sanctuary. You ought to praise him in the mighty farmer, man. You ought to praise him, uh, yes, in the mighty acts. Uh, praise him according to his excellent greatness. Uh, yes. You ought to praise him. Uh, with the sounds of the trumpet. Tell it, uh, tell it. Praise him upon the loud. And the harp, you see. Yes, yes. Praise him with the tambourine and dance, you see. Praise him with the string instruments and yes, the flute. Yes, yes. Praise him upon the loud sound and <laughs> cymbal. Praise him with the crashing cymbal. He said, let everything that has breath <laughs> and praise the Lord, you see. I'm glad this morning because when I read Isaiah, they said, uh, that is 40 uh -huh. and 31. They say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up but as wing with eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So, yes. so let us praise God this morning. Yes. Because you know that God has been good to us. He has brought us from a mighty mighty long way. Tell it, tell it. And he's not true with us yet. Uh, but because God We'll see you through. May God bless you. May God keep you this morning. And may this word have had some value. But you ought to continue to praise God. Praise him because he's worthy to be praised. You ought to praise God. Praise him every day.
struggles of this year 2020, God in his infinite and divine wisdom, his sovereign acts have challenged us and have shown us and have caused many of us just to stand still and to know that he is God and beside him there is no other. So what does that mean? We have to wait upon him. Job, even in his affliction, said, I will wait until my appointed time, and then he will call me, and I will answer. We have to learn to wait. There's an old proverb, an axiom saying in our community that haste makes waste. We run headlong to destruction. Thank God for the man of God and for the word of God. Thank God for your presence this morning. And now perhaps my brothers and sisters, visitors and friends, you've heard the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Waiting upon the Lord is a part of the ex experience of living, not only in the Christian life, but in life period. We have to learn to wait. And in our waiting, God can speak to our hearts. He can prepare us. He can guide us. He can lead us. He can direct us in the areas, in the path of righteousness for what? His name sick. And I don't know about you, but I heard the word and I was challenged by the word. Even in my own experience, just exercise the fruit of the spirit. Be patient and wait upon the Lord. Well, you heard the word this morning. You heard it with accuracy, simplicity, and clarity. And now perhaps your hearts and minds have been challenged. You've been convicted about your way of living, your, 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 your way of, of life. And now you want to get out of the fast lane and you want to get with the Spirit of God who leads us and directs us into all truth. And like the Roman jailer, he has spoken to your heart, and now, my brothers and sisters, you come in asking the rhetorical question, perhaps, what must I do to be saved? Well, worship service has two parts. The first part is when God speaks to you through his word, by his vessel, and that he has done. The second part is your response to what he has said. And so that was the second part of the message. That's what caused the Roman jailer, after hearing the word, after thinking upon it, after intellectually sorting through what he heard, he came to the conclusion that he needed Jesus the Christ, whom Paul and Silas spoke about and sang about and testified to his marvelous words. And maybe you're the same way this morning. And it's simple. There's nothing you have to do in and of yourself other than do what John the Revelator said. Open your heart to him. He says in John 3 and 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
If any man, whoever you are, hear my voice, his word, and open up your life to him, he will come in and suck with you. That means reside with you and you with him. And all you have to do is just simply invite him in, like we would invite a guest in when the doorbell rings, when there's a knock at our door. You say, who is it? And then you make the decision whether to let that person in or not. Well, I pray this morning after hearing this word from the man of God that you've made a decision that you want Christ to come into your life. And if that is the case, my friend, all I'm going to ask that you would do was bow in your spirit, in your heart, and repeat after me this simple prayer of acceptance. Lord Jesus, recognize that he is Lord of the universe, which make him Lord of your life, which make him the creator as well as the master. Lord Jesus, I need you. That's an expression of our cry for help as David was encouraging this song director. I need you. That's personal. You could be in a house with a whole family, but today God is speaking to your heart and you need him. Lord Jesus, I need you. And then you invite him and you open up that door and say, come into my life. That means you're giving him residency of your entire being to take control of my life. Come into my life and then make me the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that you would have me to be. See, that was the confusion that happened with Nicodemus in, in, in John chapter number three. Nicodemus was challenged with the question when, when, when Jesus put it to him, you must be born again. He said, how can a man when he's old go back into his mother's womb a second time and be born? And, and, and Jesus was, was not talking about a physical birth, but he was talking about a spiritual renewal. And so this morning, my friend, by inviting him in, by opening up the door of your life, you're inviting him in, expressing, Lord, I want to change. I want a spiritual renewal. I want you to form me and make me and mold me into the image of your son, Jesus Christ. So Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross of my sin. I open the door of my life and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. Make me the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that you would have me to be. I recognize that I'm a sinner. Acknowledge your fault. I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a savior, which means you'll cry for help. Recognizing that you can't save yourself. Church does not save you. Your preacher does not save you. Your tithes and offering does not save you. The, the singing of songs, your action, your, the, the, the things that you do inside the local assembly don't save you. But salvation is of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Everything else outside of that is what we call religious activities. And so when you invite him to come into your life, you acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you need a savior. And when you do that, you simply end it by saying, thank you. And that's what Elder Miller started off with saying thankfulness that we have at least a day to acknowledge the Lord but we recognize as believers every day is the Lord's day and if you've done that my friend, my brother, my sister, young man, young woman, visitor, friend, no matter where you are, if you've done that by asking the Lord to come into your life as your personal Lord and Savior, you received him, you may look the same when you look in the mirror but guess what, it's Jesus on the inside Working on the outside, oh, what a change he will make in your lives. So I want you to write down today, November, what it is, the, the, the 28th, the 28th, or the 29th. Uh, at this particular time, in the 8 o'clock hour, New Millennium Community Service, giving up thanks, Elder Samuel Miller, you keep that record as a part of your salvation conversion and you ask that the Lord will lead you and guide you into a local fellowship in your locale in your vicinity and you go to those elders you go to that pastor you give him that and you tell him on this day at this time this man preached this message and I received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior and I've been led by the power of the Holy Spirit to this place and would you all be willing to help me to grow in my newfound faith and anybody worse they salt 
as a believer will be more than glad because now heaven is rejoicing. And now you'll be planted firmly in good soil. You will grow. You will be nurtured. You will expand your intellectual understanding of what the Bible says about the person called Jesus Christ. And the more you grow, the sweeter he will become to you. Now, for those of you who, who, who are in this uh, metropolitan area of the city and in, in the city of New Orleans, at the end of this broadcast, you will see our information on the bottom of the screen. You will see our number. We welcome you to call us. We will answer. If there's any questions that you have regarding this message, we will be glad to fa facilitate you with whatever you need in order to help you to clear up any questions or concerns that you have and give you any material necessary that will help you to continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is every day, my friend. It was nothing complicated about what was said. All you have to do is receive it, embrace it, implement it in your life, and then live it out in your everyday experience. The least we can do to God is say thank you. So my friend, the clock on the wall has told us that our time for this Sunday has come to an end. But what you can do, you can continue to rejoice, continue to praise the Lord, continue to recognize that it is his grace and mercy that is carrying us. And keep it each and every day. May God bless you. May God keep you until we meet again. And as we say in this place, Shalom. God bless it be upon you. May his face forever shine upon you. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy is down. People can't get.